giving yourself the permission to let go of the feeling that you need to hurry up because that's how we live our life, isn't it? We live in this state of I've got to, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to. I just got to keep yes. going and I've got to keep doing stuff and I've got to hurry through and that's why we miss everything. This is Katie Gordon and you're listening to the Wait Is Over podcast. Welcome health and freedom seekers. Sit back and relax as you come on this journey of overcoming obstacles so you can lose weight, gain health and live the life you've been looking for. Hello, listeners, and welcome to this week's show. I'm your host, Katie Gordon, and the wait is over with Dietless Living 360 Degrees. There's no recipes, food regimes, or exercise programs to follow. This is simply about how to take your life back, how to take control, because we all have a voice and we want to be heard. We want to forget about dieting, focus on living, and lose weight. And to do that, we have to create a new mindset that gets us over the obstacles and challenges of life and our own unconscious programs, because that's really what's impacting on our weight and health and causing habit relapse. And the purpose of this podcast is to share what I learned over 25 years in dieting health and spending over $100,000 working out how to step into dietless living. And today I have a special guest with me. I have the lovely Jackie Jarvis. So welcome to the show, Jackie. I'm really very excited to have you with us today. It's really nice of you to invite me, Katie. Thanks. So great to have you. And Jackie, I've invited you to join us because you've actually walked over 3,000 kilometres across Spain on the Camino de Santiago routes. Is that right? That is right. How many routes have you actually walked? Well, I've walked, um, the book starts actually when I started walking solo and there are six different Caminos in the book. And before that, I started with the Camino Frances. Um, Then I went on and walked the Portuguese Camino and then the first half of the Norde route. So um, in total, I think it certainly must be uh, clocking over 3,000 kilometres now, I think, uh, across Spain. Wow, that's awesome. And how, over how many years would that be? Um, well, the initial, initial, the book starts, uh, actually the book starts with my Caminos, which are more or less five years ago. Five years ago, I separated with, or I split up with a partner who I had been walking the routes with before. So I guess it must be probably about um, about eight years, I think, in total. I'm just so thrilled to be chatting to you about this because doing the pilgrimage the pilgrimage walks they're something that I've I've often wanted to do and thought about and haven't gotten around to and we're going to talk about that a little bit further along but I do want to say that you've actually you have written an Amazon best-selling book and it's called Transform Your Life by Walking and in there you actually share with us quite a few of your ideas and insights on how to lighten our burdens and still our busy minds, how to be happier in ourselves and to find the joy in simplicity. And, you know, just actually reading through your book, there's so many great examples where you really highlight those specific areas. Is that the intention of doing the pilgrim walks or is it just something that only you get or everybody has when they do the walks? Well, the thing is, is I think people can get those kind of insights wherever they are, if that makes sense. Because I think um, sometimes when you share, I've done all these thousands of kilometres on pilgrimages, people wonder whether, you know, I have to go on a pilgrimage to to get those kind of insights. I think they can be obtained in daily life and daily practice. However, quite often people go on a pilgrimage. It's almost the pilgrimage is something where you go in search of meaning. You know, the old the old days, you know, people went on pilgrimages to a a special or foreign place in order to uh, gain some sort of personal transformation. And it's it's sometimes that um, moving of yourself to a different location to experience something different. 
yes. that can can kickstart some of these um, feelings. But I wouldn't say that you can't. They can't be obtained anywhere else because that would be a that would be wrong. You can get these feelings if you go for a walk locally. Because I'm, a, you know, obviously a big fan of of yes. um, the power of walking. So I think the pilgrimages for me was, um, you know, uh, initially an attempt. I was a busy, overloaded, stressed business person who couldn't seem to carve uh, any time for myself, any time to think, um, any time to reflect. And initially that was one of the motivators when I went on the first uh, pilgrimage, which was probably about yeah, eight or nine years ago. Yeah. But the pilgrimages that I went on uh, that I wrote about in the book um, that I captured all the insights were the ones that were in a way more meaningful because they were my solo journey. And that's yes. quite different. I think when you go alone, you know, that's the time when, you know, you really get the most uh, connection with yourself, I think, and the most insight. I'd have to agree with that. And we're going to talk about that in a minute as well, because when I think about going going and doing the walks myself, it's like, I don't think I'd want to go with anyone else. I just would want to be on my own. I like, and when I read your book, I really, that sort of really cements it in for me more that I would really rather do it on my own, at my own pace, and then meet the people that you meet along the way rather than, you know, getting up. I do all my travelling on my own anyway. So, you know, you're working to your own clock rather than to anyone else's clock, which I think would give a lot more insight into what you're doing and and who you're being and whatnot. So there's quite a few things in your book that I've highlighted and we're going to have a little chat about today. Great. Jackie, (laughs) this show is actually about overcoming the obstacles and challenges that get in our way of having health and the health and physical freedom that we really want to have. And one of the most common weight loss obstacles that we have is actually the barriers that we put in front of ourselves that stop us from even committing and starting. And now this isn't just something that we do with losing weight, of course. You know, there's there's many things where we stop ourselves from doing something because the barrier is just um, something that we do, like we just can't imagine getting over it. But when you you say in your book, like on your first solo uh, walk, which was the Camino de Norte, is that correct? That's right. It was the second half of the Camino Norte, weirdly, because the first half I had done with my ex-partner the previous yeah. year. And so, um, you know, that's why I started the book from the second half. I think I called the the chapter my other half. So, yes. And there was a point when you um, realized that you would either have to go alone or just simply not go at all because you had planned to go along with your partner. But because that relationship had ended, Um, you finally decided to go solo. And in your book, you say that you were scared, you were upset and, you know, that it was hard at first, but it was the beginning of the most important journey in life, which is the ones that we make alone. So can you sort of step back into that decision point and tell us, you know, how you actually overcame yourself like this is the mindset stuff that all humans really do struggle with. So what were your fears and internal chatter and how did you actually overcome them to be able to make that decision to go through with the steps and go on your adventure? I think, first of all, it was because the Camino or walking the Camino de Santiago routes originally was my idea, you know, so it was my idea and I asked my partner would, would he like to come with me and he actually very you know did enjoy them and we had you know had a lot of good times together so I had already got that experience of of what it's like to do it and I also gained a huge amount from it so in the back of my mind was if I stop myself doing something now that's going to be really good for me that I know is going to be probably the best thing I could do for myself is carry on with these journeys In fact, I almost needed it more, um, if that makes sense. I needed to make that decision more because I was alone. And I thought, well, 
I could just, you know, as we all do, you, you just want to hide away and you don't want to do anything that reminds you of, um, you know, your previous experiences, you know. So it was actually quite hard at the time, but it was the love of, of what I knew I was going to experience, if that makes yeah. sense. And also I was curious to find out who I was on my own because I think when you've been with, with someone for a long time and some people listening might, might relate to it, you know, I'd been with my previous partner for six years. That was quite a long time. You know, you, you sometimes forget who you are, you know, who you are alone. And so I was curious to know, you know, would I would I be able to do it? Because at the time I'd been relying on Matt for various, um, I don't know, it, just various things. So I felt weaker, maybe alone at the start yeah. of the, the journey. So I think it was just... I imagine you felt quite unsure because, like you say, you do things as a team together and all of a sudden right. it's like, well, I'm going to have to do all of it, all portions well, it was... for myself. Yeah, he was pretty good at the, the navigation side of things. Yeah. You know, he was, I don't know, you just do things as a team and alone Some sometimes, especially out on some of the routes you are, yeah you're not with people at all you know you can be quite in quite remote areas you don't necessarily speak the language you know it's you know it could be daunting it's not for me now I have no fear of any of that kind of thing and like you I've done a lot of traveling alone in the past but as you get older sometimes you know you may be a little bit less sure of yourself you know can you do what you used to do all of that kind of thing so and um, if there's a gap too, I think, you know, like if you're just constantly doing stuff on your own, if you, you know, but if there's been a gap between the last one and this one and, you know, and this one's different, I think that's where the fear kind of comes back in because your brain goes, oh, but we've been sitting here nice and comfortable. Are you sure you want to go? <laughs> exactly. No, exactly. No, and it was it was hard then. It, it seems silly now looking back that I even thought like that. But yeah. that's because I've had, you know, four or five years of doing this kind of thing alone and um i would say that it was definitely the best the best decision i made um because i held on to something that was important to me yeah. and i suppose true to myself um which which is important and that opens the door right because if you had have said no i'm i'm not going to go on my own i'm going to stay then the rest of the book would have never happened probably well, that, well the, the thing is the original idea was this this wasn't a book this was my personal diaries and insights and i used yeah. to post some of them uh, just snippets of things for the benefit of the people that i work with in my business coaching life and um it was only the just recently, this last, the last Camino, few Caminos I did, I had people saying things like, oh, I really miss your your daily insights, um, you know, when you're walking the Camino, um, when, when are you going on another one, that kind of thing. And then, oh, I wish I had, the, I wish you'd put them in a book so I could have access to them. And I had quite a few comments like that. So I thought maybe, you know, maybe it's worth approaching a publisher and seeing whether or not they're good enough. And so therefore I went back to the, five years ago, the, the second half of the Camino Norte and collected all the diaries from the Caminos over the, the each one that I did each year yeah. and then put them into the book with the one I did um, last year. So so that's how it was formed. It was only because I kept note of all this stuff at the end of each day that yeah. I actually had the insights available for the book. So that was quite interesting in itself. Which is the value of keeping a diary, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. And you've slightly... got really great photos in there because the photos tell the story of what you saw, you know. there's I like the book because there's not, you know, pages and pages and pages of writing. There's It's diary form. Here's what happened today. It's just a short few paragraphs. And then beautiful pictures of what you actually saw on the day, the, you know, pictures of you in the rain and, you know, and you kind of go, oh, yeah, right, that that would have been probably challenging, you know. And so I really did like your book. Oh, that's great. No, I, I wanted it to be accessible because I think everybody's busy and it's, you know, you want to get inspired, you know. So I tried to write the pieces to to share a little bit of the experience of the um, hike, hiking the Camino, but also to share those important insights and those reflections because that's really what pilgrimage is about it's yeah. that time out space to to hear yourself think yeah. and so if I could share how I was thinking you know many people might relate to it and then also posing the question or the insight gives people a chance to actually 
think themselves as they're reading this section, which is was part of the style that I decided to to use. Yeah, well, I wrote some things in the margins, you know, you ask a question, all right, where am I carrying too much in life? Oh, yeah, and, you know, <laughs> make a few notes. And it is, it's a good book. It's interesting. It's easy to read. And like I said, the pictures are lovely. So that really illustrates, as you know, picture paints a thousand words. It really does illustrate a lot of what you were experiencing on the day. And you actually said in the book that the value of walking the long distance is that it extends time, it helps you to slow down and you pay attention. And there was actually a comment on one of your later walks where you you talk about seeing the detail in everything, you know, and I think you, you said you saw that, you know, it was the detail in a sheep's eye and, you know, the grass <laughs> and the leaves. And I thought, well, that's really true. I've sort of experienced something similar, like I could relate to that. And I thought that's it where you really, you're seeing the things that you're seeing, but you're really appreciating their form and shape and and the beauty of them because that is the awe of mother nature isn't it it certainly is and I think that yeah you know, it's great you remember the piece about the sheep's eye I can remember that myself <laughs> it's bringing it back to me but it's it's so nice to have that time I think what, what it is about when you walk long distance over a long period is initially you arrive you know and your head's still busy with all your own thoughts and you know mm -hmm. your kind of busyness you're not really in the moment you know we, we you know pop, pop, you know the problem in life is we're never really fully there we're always somewhere else you know so yeah you know when I once you get walking for for a while you've been doing it every day it, it's as if all the thoughts start to go away they start to dissipate and your your mind starts to be filled with actually nothing you know which is you I mean you probably can't imagine that this moment in time but to actually have a mind that is clear of all the internal chatter and the thoughts and the thinking the about the future list. a to-do list the past the future you know whatever yeah. um and so therefore you're you're able to fully engage in the moment and what is around you and actually for once pay full attention to yeah. something beautiful and there's so much beauty around and it's not just on a camino there's beauty around every single day wherever we live you know there's Yes. There's there's sheep size all over the place. We just don't, we don't look in a sheep size. Um, it's because lovely, we don't right? have it's, time, you know. It reminds <laughs> me of you know, cows are so beautiful, you know. And when you said about the sheep's eye, I just remembered thinking when I, you know, I was looking at cows and you think their eyes are so beautiful and so expressive, you know. And that's really what I was thinking, you know, and relating to because it is, you, like you said, you, you've emptied out your mind and then all of a sudden, well, not even all of a sudden, it's a kind of a gradual thing, I imagine, where you're connecting. Like that's the whole that's thing. Right. It's all a living environment, isn't it? It is. And I think that connecting with nature, um, you know, we talked a bit about how, you know, many of us, you know, often in life, we just want to feel happy, you know, that's, that's it, you know, it's simple, you know, I want to feel happy. And if yeah. you're happy with what you've got, you've got so much around you that we're, we're living in abundance, um, if only we could see it. And I think when I go on these pilgrimages, it reminds me, I mean, I'm not, I do try to live the Camino way in my normal life, but yeah. when I go on the, the hikes, it kind of gets me back to that place where I fully know you know what's important and yeah. I fully connect with nature um your own body your own thoughts your own spirit it's a spiritual thing too so it's uh you know it's powerful well and it's I appreciate that it, it is not easy to live the Camino way in day-to-day -day life because we do have things that have to fill our brain to you know we're working busy shopping cleaning all of that stuff <laughs> and we do have to have a busy mind to maintain the life that we have to maintain and the things we have to maintain. But if you've got that sort of like a separate, you know, it's like a a little cupboard that you can yeah. tap into and go, okay, now I know what it feels like to be out on the track 
and be able to tap into that essence of yourself. That's right. And I think that, um, you know, you can do that. Like, I don't know, today I've got a busy day and, but I will take a short time to go out for a walk. You know, it might be a 40 minute or an hour's walk. Um, yeah. And while I'm out on that walk, you know, I will try and make my, you know, be fully present with, with where I'm at. You know, if I've just walked along the Thames path, which is not far from where I live, because I can't be anywhere else in that one hour. I can't be in my office. Um, I can't be thinking about the next client. You know, I can be fully engaged with where I am. So I think it's it. Sometimes it's about training yourself to 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 be more present. Um, that's when we're truly happy. Is when you're fully present in the moment. And um, you know, I like I do agree with you because it. When I see people out for walk and they go. I walked, you know, however far I walked today and I'm going for a walk, but they've got their earpods in, so they're listening to something, they're not present or they're chatting with someone or they're on the phone or they're power walking, you know, because you're going to burn through the calories. And it's yeah, like, yeah. You're, mi- you're missing everything. The point yeah, is yeah. walk and the, the great value of a walk is to relax you. You're not going home relaxed. You haven't stopped no. your mind for one second. <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah, no, I think it's I think sometimes in life you have to experience something different to know how it feels to replicate it. And I think yeah. when I walk the value of the Camino walking, because it's such long distance, it's a bit like you've had a I'd say maybe a bit more of a spiritual experience. It's it it becomes you feel different. Yeah. Um, the energy of the the roots they've been walked by saints and pilgrims for centuries you're walking where you know there's been a lot of kind of spiritual thought you know there's a lot of energy on the lines that you're walking and uh the fact you're out in nature all day long you haven't got anything else to distract you you don't look at your phone you know you might do it at the end of the day you might take it with you in an emergency but you're not you haven't got any gadgets around you yeah. and if you are alone there's no talking either so yeah. you become you settle you know you settle like um i don't know in, within yourself and you get a sense of peace that perhaps you haven't felt in a very long time you you sort of um want to replicate that you you remember it it's it's anchored in you know kind of silent running I call it you know that's settled I like that word you use settled you become like yeah. settling in you to me it's you know when I go on a, a nice walk and it's um it's just silent running it's like all the machinery inside shuts down that's and right there's, there's quiet yeah it's a fantastic place to get to and it only really happens normally when you meditate or something you know yeah. <laughs> but you can actually achieve it with this long distance um walking and you get a surge of happiness a bit like um you know uh i don't know something from outside comes in it's it is a quite spiritual thing that you become very connected with everything you know nature uh the weather doesn't matter it doesn't matter if it rains the sun everything becomes you become one at once you know just for just for brief moments and and it's all you need sometimes to go you know what that really energized me that gave me something really special i i know everything's going to be okay now you know and so therefore you can take that back with you or you know you take it with you in your life you know it's 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 powerful Yes, those moments of bliss and joy. I mean, I get it walking around Brisbane City because I do take the time to walk mindfully and enjoy what's happening. There's beautiful trees everywhere, apart from the cars and the pollution and everything. Beautiful trees, you know, and the jacarandas are in flowers and the delonics and, you know, and I smell the air and the perfume. And sometimes I'm actually moved to tears with, the joy of you know that it's kind of like what you're saying that it's a connection moment I'm just admiring the beauty of a tree and I feel such joy about it that you know I feel tears and then it's like oh that is so nice yeah that is that that is a real moment of connection that really is that's that's definitely where you feel something because most of life you can go around like a robot without hardly feeling anything, you know, moving from one thing to the next, you know, shutting down feelings and, and connections and things because there isn't any time for it or 
there's no space for it and no space you know I think it's our yeah. brains too full we see things oh yeah that's pretty that's whatever but we don't really connect with its beauty no we don't really take it in you know no. and, um, and I think that's probably well, one of the messages I was trying to get across in the book you know you can go on something with a head full of thoughts um negative feelings and you know not feeling great not feeling co comfortable and and you know come out the other side feeling like a a new you, you know. <laughs> yeah. So Re um, refreshed and revitalized. And in yeah. the book, you actually were there's a the in the the first walk, I think it was, you said when well, you realized you were carrying too much, you had too much in your pack, you'd pack too much stuff. And you know, I mean that that really yeah, that was where you said, Are you carrying too much in life? And I'm like, Yeah, where am I carrying too much in life? <laughs> because it's such a great question that we do. We we just have all this stuff. And you know, when you ask that question, it's like, Oh, I look around and I don't buy things anymore, but I still have the things of the past. And I often think, Oh, I really need to simplify my the contents of my home and that's really part of it you know carrying too much in in things carrying too much in emotionally carrying too much mentally carrying too much physically which is what you know this podcast is about is is the weight that we carry and with you it was your your pack you know it kind of brought it to you like well where else in life have I packed too much it's funny because um, I'm glad you brought that that up because that's been the theme throughout all of the journey. You know, you know, there's one thing that's the big theme in your life because I believe that you you take yourself wherever you go. You know, you yes. think you're going to escape and go, I'll go away and do that, and that if I go there, I'll change. But actually, when I first arrived on the Camino, this is before the book. Actually, I took. I think I didn't even put try the pack on before I went on the, the first Camino, which is the Camino Frances. And I think I was trying to carry, I think it was something like 15 or 16 kilos in a, in a rucksack. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know and, and it was ridiculous because, of course, the weight that you're carrying, you know, I was looking down, my legs ached, you know, my back ached, you know, I could hardly enjoy the environment. And so... I remember on that very first Camino, you know, throwing my rucksack on the ground and, you know, um, you know, saying, well, you know, wherever you go, Jack, you take yourself with you, which is which meant really was, you know, I was overloaded when I left for the Camino and I was still overloaded on the Camino. So yeah, I think I brought that, my that, shit with me. <laughs> yeah. So that's where I was giving lots of stuff away and sending it back and things. But yeah. Even when I started on the solo journey, I knew that I would have to carry everything myself. I wouldn't have a partner that I could, you know, offload a bit, bit, bit to or yeah. anything. And I still repeatedly carried too much. You know, each each time I let go of a bit more. And I think right at the end, um, the end of the book, which was last year's Camino, I actually sent the pack on. With, I've um, got that in pay, my notes pay. as we go along because that was noteworthy too, you know, where you you kind of went, you felt guilty. Should I, I, I should be carrying my stuff? <laughs> exactly, but it's all this sort of, it's the same thought patterns that go on in our daily life. I was carrying, that was just a metaphor for what I was carrying in life. Yeah. And the more I let go out of the pack, it became this kind of, Thing, I'm actually letting go in the weight because the weight that you carry in the rucksack actually sometimes I think about that it stops me putting on weight because I don't want to have any more weight to carry because and it's that whole thing about yeah the more you carry the harder it is to to travel light in life um, and to feel and to, that freedom and yeah to free feel free and be able to enjoy what's around you so yeah. the the letting go and the analysis of what is actually needed went throughout the whole of the yes the, I the five the different theme. caminos <laughs> <laughs> and I think and, at the end I, I learned the lesson because I sent it on I yeah. carried less, but I sent the 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 weight on I paid the, the five or seven euros it was to, yeah. to send it on and uh, that's not always possible, by the way. So when I go on Caminos with um, where there's no pack carrying service, yeah, I really carry the absolute basics now. You know, so yeah. it's all only only what I need. You know, so 
<laughs> and that's the thing. Just keep whittling it down to what the hell is my essentials that I need. Yeah. I did really like that because and that was the whole thing, you know, through all my years of being overweight, that was the word that really often came to me is I'm encumbered by yes. the weight, you know, I'm constantly carrying it. And I want to unburden myself from <laughs> it and how to do that, like how to unburden it and not pick it up again, you know, that's the whole thing. And I think we do carry too much shit. We do, but I think but we do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think um, letting go of it bit by bit um, is yeah. quite good because it's like weight as well. If you, yep. like yours is about dietless living, it's about a healthy way of living. It's not about a diet as such, you know, a crash mm -hmm. diet. It'd be a bit like me getting angry with my rucksack and letting taking everything out and having nothing. That's and then it, missing, they're all done. <laughs> they're all done and they're missing some of the bits and then yes. slowly putting them back in again. Whereas if you if you let go of it bit by bit and also then just put, what's essential around you and yeah. then start enjoying what's essential around you you know like I start enjoying yeah. having less I mean I do a lot of decluttering all the time I've you know I try to live in the you know the simplest way I can you know I'm always yeah. kind of clearing away ex excess and um and I think it's the same with weight and you know, if you go on a diet that's bit by bit you know pound Small by pound adjustments over time and and really it's the same with food you know and we'll come back to your walking in a sec but with the food thing it's the same we add in more and more everybody's always about oh if i add this and this and this and this food should be the same as everything in life really simple and then that is that you know we have a very more 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 mentality for everything in life yeah we do and I think also I had an experience of the dry January I decided to do dry January which is a healthy decision you know after a bit of excess over Christmas you know sort of decided yeah. that instead of thinking I'll just drink all the bottles of wine that are in the fridge <laughs> I'll leave them there and, yeah. and actually have a dry January and it's actually sometimes I think it's easy when you make the decision to do something it's a bit like starting the Camino it's I actually decided to do it and then after yeah. you've actually decided to do it fully it's much easier yeah. it's the bit between where you can't quite decide whether you're going to let go of the stuff in the rucksack or not you know when you finally throw it to the ground and go do you know what that's it yeah. <laughs> I'm never doing this again it's done you know so You've yeah, got to get fed up with it enough, I think. Yes. Like, you know, with the rucksack and and many things in life, it's when we, you know, we'll put up with the pain forever. We can't stand an itch for more than a couple of seconds, but we'll put up with the pain for a very, very long time. But when we've had enough, we chuck that rucksack on the ground. <laughs> That's it, when we've actually had enough. And I really yeah. did like that in about your book because, you did cover that really well. And I think there was a part in there too, you sort of said, well, you know, where we are essentially all alone, always, like, you know, at the, the end of the day, because you, you said something about yourself, you know, I, I'm here, it's me, it is always just me. And we are all ultimately all alone and all journeys in life are ultimately done alone we are the the only ones who who can overcome any of our obstacles you there was nothing anyone else could do for you when it came to that decision point of will I go won't I go and I, I really did like that do you remember saying that you know that we we essentially are all alone yes I mean I think it's um uh you know belief I have so I'm quite spiritually based so I think we we are we're alone as in you know in our kind of everyday life and I think if you can be secure in in your aloneness if that makes sense yes. we are connected but I feel more connected I I can be alone and still feel connected if that makes sense so yes. um, and I think there was a big thing on the Camino with um, where you met people you met some wonderful people um, on the journey so you were never alone if that makes sense. So on the Camino, you were never actually alone. There was always somebody that you might bump into. You might have days where you walked alone, but you would 
meet up with another pilgrim yeah. in the evening or something. But the, the key was never to become attached because um, normally we get attached to people. Oh, I can't, I couldn't live without this person or I couldn't, yeah. you know, I can't do this without my partner or I couldn't, um, you know, I need, I need, I'm too scared to do this on my own or I, you know, I wouldn't enjoy it on my own or, you know, I yeah. can't see the pleasure of doing something on your own. And I think on the Camino, you learn to enjoy everything alone. You know, yeah. if you can eat on your own, you can walk on your own, you can enjoy your day completely alone. Yeah. You know, it's absolutely fine. And yet when you had the opportunity to connect, that was also great. So there was a, this sense of being strong enough alone to enjoy the fully enjoy the journey and not need things, other people, things to happen. You could just be completely secure. It's um, a relaxation, isn't it, of yeah. your own company, of understanding or just it's not even understanding, it's a feeling. I'm Yes. I'm at peace with me. Yes. yes. And there will be other people along the way. We'll chat, we'll whatever, we'll connect, and then they will move on. And I will still be just quite content and relaxed to be me. But that's very powerful because it helps you do not so needy. I mean, yes. I think, you know, sometimes you don't realize how needy you can be, you know, in different areas. <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah, I do. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you go, <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, actually, sort of getting to that place where you're really okay with being alone. Um, yep. it, it's very empowering and it's very freeing because you can go anywhere, do anything, yep. um, and age, age is no no barrier to that. Yep. And then when people come on the path, you make different choices. Do I want to share my energy with this person? Do I want to spend time? Do I want to? You know, so you're making slightly different choices going forward yeah. than you might have before. So, yeah, so it's a very powerful feeling to have and, and it gives you an awful lot of strength in life, I think. I think so. The One of the greatest powers, I feel, is the joy of your own company. And I think not enough people understand how joyful it really can be. It is lovely to be with other people, but... The real joy is knowing that I'm pretty comfortable with my own company and being yeah. able to do that, to go and do your holidays on your own or, or just sit and do whatever, enjoy yourself. And one of the things I liked in your book too is you talked about how on the trail daily life actually becomes far less predictable right you you we get stuck in our own you know in normal life we get stuck in our own um patterns and habits and we become very entrenched in the way that we do things and you you've kind of illuminated how on the path all of that just goes away because the predictability is just one foot in front of the other Yes, I think um, that's a good, good point. I think it's good to change your environment because in terms of, you know, connectivity in your mind, you know, the more challenging things you sort of set yourself and then you put yourself in different situations, it makes you think in a different way. Yeah. Uh, a bit like learning a new language. You know, you've suddenly got to make different connections. And I think that's definitely good for your mind, whatever age you are. Yes. Um, and I think going out on, you know, walking a Camino, yes, there were signs to follow, but it wasn't a neat little path. You know, you could be going up all sorts of um, <laughs> mountains and you would see signs, but they might be hidden on a tree or something. So it was, you know, very much, you know, you're in lots of different environments, climbing up a mountain, going through a, a small village, you know, um, you know, walking through a, a city even, you know. So, you know, you could be in these a variety of different environments, looking out for signs and things to follow the route, places yeah. you've never been before. You could get lost. You know, there were times when I lost, you know, lost the signs and I wasn't sure where I was and, you know, completely alone on a mountain once in the fog, you know, those kind of things. Yeah, happened, I remember you know. reading all that. <laughs> But I think what happens on the Camino, there's this sense of uh, trust. Um, you know, I had this fat, powerful feeling that the Camino will always look after you. There's always that saying that when you're walking yeah. these paths, you will always be looked after. And I always had, a, a, you know, a sense of just relax. You know, it's all going to be OK. Yeah. And, and you will find your way, even when I was panicking and I couldn't see a sign or I lost, you know, I lost my way. You know, there was times when I thought, oh my God, you know. 
Where the hell uh, am how I? Can I? I can't, I can't get a taxi. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't jump on a bus. But um, I think that feeling of trust in the path I've brought back because I think sometimes, as we know, we're in business. It can be lots of ups and downs. Yeah. Uh, lots of times when you don't quite know what's going to happen or what's around the corner. There's economic, political challenges that we are, uh, environment that we're in at the moment. I think that sense of if I can just keep walking the path, just keep taking the next step, I need yeah. to trust that it's going to be okay. It does. And I think that's, that's quite that's important. That's the thing, isn't it? You've just got to keep moving forward. Yeah. And and like you in your book, you have got, as I said before, really lovely pictures of the things that you saw and the villages and the, the places that you stayed. And these are the things that you you do find your path. I do love some of the pictures you show of the arrows, and it's like, yeah, that's a where's Wally type of moment, <laughs> you know, looking for your arrows this way, you know, hiding in the bushes and stuff. <laughs> Um, but like you say, it's just <laughs> unfolded because either someone's going to come along, you'll, you'll backtrack in life, or I, I, you do really cover it very well as a metaphor for life. <laughs> yeah, it is really me meant to be like that. Cause, I mean, there was a, I think there's one, I don't know if you remember one story where I was, I went off track and then a dog came out of nowhere and they can be quite fierce the dogs in Spain and this dog came out of nowhere and started barking and I was like oh my god you know like so I was quite frightened of these great big huge dogs so I, I just managed to get past this dog and I started walking back and I couldn't see any signs and then as I was walking back I saw some guys coming out of uh, it was in the middle of this field middle of nowhere two men big men with guns you know walking along you know and I thought oh my god you know that so I managed to just keep cool then and just sort of kind of walk past and just hope that the guns were for something else. So I walked past, <laughs> I still hadn't seen this. So I walked past a barking dog, two guys with guns. And I came through um, the route and I came up to a road and I was kind of going over this um, motorway pass. And I thought, this can't be right. You know, I'm completely wrong. I saw I that picture of the big uh, going over the highway. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So I was walking over that and then a, a guy came along in a van. And saying, oh, if you're looking for the Camino, it's not here. It's, it's you know, it's five <laughs> kilometres away or something. And he then said, do you want a lift? And I thought, oh, my God, am I going to take a lift from a guy that I don't know in Spain? Or am I going to walk back and encounter two guys with guns and a dog? So I decided to take the lift with the guy in the van. And it was OK, you know, but normally I wouldn't do that. But he dropped me at the at the right place. But I remember, you know, you have moments like that where it's not all plain sailing. It's you have to make decisions. And, yeah. you know, um, luckily I had Google Maps, but Google Maps couldn't help me find the, the, the yellow signs of the Camino. You know, so. Where's the yellow sign? <laughs> it's not follow the yellow brick road. It's follow no. the little yellow signs. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, though. Definitely. But yeah, there were definitely moments of, you know, my God, you know, but I made it. And I think when you, you know, you do find yourself going through these challenges, um, it makes you stronger. It makes you yeah. um, gives you more you know, confidence in yourself. It does. Because it you've does. made choices and decisions and you've gotten yourself through. And it's yeah. not even it's the getting yourself through the emotional parts more than anything, isn't it? You know, yes. you've gotten yourself through your emotional configurations of just throw your pack down and run <laughs> you yeah, know yeah, or yeah. just pack it in give it up go home you know whatever yeah. our brain tells us and it's that staying power that says no hang on look I think it'll be all right yeah no that's right and I, I thought like that a number of times especially when I couldn't see a sign sometimes you'd go for a long period of time and there was no sign and I remember thinking oh my god I've got to turn back it can't be down here and then it was yeah. No, just keep going a bit further and you'll see it. And I very much think that's similar in life. You know, when you, you, you know, you're trying to achieve a goal, yeah, um, whatever it is that you want to achieve, and you're kind of so far along and you feel like, oh, no, this isn't going to work. I'm going to have to backtrack. Yeah. And then you think, OK, I'll just make a little bit more effort. I'll just, you know, make those few calls. I'll just do that, you know, extra action or whatever. And, yeah. and then suddenly there's a result and I think that's 
that pushes me along sometimes when I have those moments in business where I think it's not going to be worth it or it's too difficult or I'm not I'm making sure Surely I'm lost. <laughs> yeah, surely I'm lost. I can't see a sign. Yeah. You know, so, I've surely gone yeah. down the wrong path somewhere because this doesn't look anything like I thought it was going to be looking like. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. The story of life, isn't it? This doesn't yeah. look like what I planned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Keep looking definitely. for the little yellow arrows. We should leave ourselves little yellow arrows around the house. Yeah, I've got. I've actually got a couple of those in my house. Yeah. Have you? Just, yeah, <laughs> just to remind me that keep keep following the signs. Follow right? their little yellow arrows. Yeah. Well, I wanted to talk about because on on um, uh, day one of one of the walks, you said how very very wet it was. It was wet, sunny, wet, sunny, and that there was like a, it was a lot of hills. There was, yeah. you know, a bit of traversing up and down. And I did really like it that bit that you talked about, you know, the it was hard work getting up the hills. This is the story of life, hard work getting up the hills. But, you know, going down the hills was quite good. It was a bit of relief. And what I really liked about that was that's kind of this thing that we think in life is, we think about the ups and downs of life when everyone thinks the ups are good and the downs are bad, but it's not really the case. Every, there's The ups are good because the ups are taking you to places that you haven't been before to higher peaks, but the downs are, like you say, where you are, you get relief. You get the joy. It's a bit easier. It's, you know, I think about trampolines, you know, to get that high thing, you've got to hit hard on the bounce down, right? Yes. And yeah. When you were talking about that, you know, okay, so I've, it's been wet, it's been sunny, it's been all in one day and it's been up and down mountains, but you you weren't bothered by it at all. I think you were uh, like it was day one, but you a seasoned uh walker do you remember that day yeah I mean I can remember many days where it's um the, I think the phrase was you know what what goes up has to come down you know the, <laughs> so you know you get the joy of getting to the, the top of the mountain peaks which are many of them and then yeah. you know coming down afterwards like you say is a, a relaxation and the wind the rain you have you know you've got to be prepared to be out in all weathers and see good in it all if that makes yeah. sense because sometimes we don't go out because it's raining or we stay inside because it's cold and I think there can be joy in all of that so yeah. I think if you can I think on the Camino I learned to see whatever was going to happen was good you know because there's even in adversity there was a lesson you know yeah. there's a an insight that that you you know uh, I can remember the fog you know going out in yeah. fog and then the fog lifting and very often the fog was early in the morning you know so and it it often it uh, was a reflection of what was going on in my mind I remember that you know like often yeah. you know there have been some awful thoughts that crept in you know where you start feeling down for some reason you know and it's yeah. because of what you're thinking about and then as I walked I remember the the fog lifting and it was very much like as you walked your thoughts became lighter, brighter, yeah. and the fog lifts, which is very much like the the bad times go away. They do, yeah. They do, they do dissipate if you just keep moving through. Moving through them is the key, yeah. and I think that's the thing: is don't try and push them away. Just move through it like the fog. And maybe climbing a mountain is hard to get up to the top, but there's a even better view when you get up there so enjoy it give yourself time for it you know so it's those kind of lessons there were a lot of lessons in in the nature around me at the time and they often reflected what was going on in my mind so that's yeah. what I wrote about really I thought tried to anyway well you did a good job and you also talked about that letting go of the feeling that you need to hurry up you, I mean there was a day in there I think and you said oh I'm just going to do Oh, well, 19 Ks, which was a short day on the trail, but you know, it's still a long day. But I, I think that was the day. And you said, I'm just I'm, I'm just going to do a short day. And then, you know, you gave yourself a hard time about, oh, that's not enough and I should do more. And, <laughs> and it was about, you know, kind of giving yourself the permission 
to let go of the feeling that you need to hurry up because that's how we live our life, isn't it? We live in this state of I've got to, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to. I just got to keep yes. going and I've got to keep doing stuff and I've got to hurry through and that's why we miss everything. So I, I really do like you have touched on so many of the saner points of life that we all need to remember. Yes, I think, and I think naturally when you walk, um, you t- you you're much slower to start with. You're not taking a bus or a, hiring a car. Yeah, you naturally slow down. You have to slow down because you're going at that sort of you know native pace, and that's how we all started. That's the only transport we had, yep. you know, many centuries ago was our feet. And so um, I think just by slowing down, you you end up seeing more, you feel more, you hear more, you're in a voice, yeah. you learn more. Um, and actually, the simpler you make things, the happier you feel. Yeah. So it's a combination. And I think in normal life, we're a bit like running on a treadmill all the time. Um, you know, got to get to the end the of the day. And then, of course, you know, when you, I don't know if you ever have that feeling where you look back and think, I can't remember what happened you know because uh, you know where did this year go I hear people saying that I can't believe it's 2023 now you know yeah um we'll get to Christmas and I went oh my god where did that you know where did 12 months go and of course our life is actually flashing by yes you know so if you if you just kind of live like that you'll be 80 before you know it and and you won't ever be able to go on the Camino because you won't be able to walk the distance you know so so it's kind of you know taking these pockets of time where life completely slows down yeah and you can actually feel the world that you're actually living in you know you can actually experience it yes i remember rushing through it all yeah, but i can remember everything on that camino i can remember everything for about five years ago what happened how i felt the people i met you know as you bring it up i can remember it as if it was yesterday yeah. Whereas if you ask me about a lot of other things that happened five years ago, I can't even remember. <laughs> I don't even remember doing them, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's it's you you really connect much more when you slow down and and physically experience something by using your own body to to do it, walking and taking it in and because you're um, using a different part yeah. of your brain. You're not running yeah. on automatic, and that's why yeah. we don't remember our life. And what we do because we're stuck in automatic mode. It's that I just drove from, you know, work to home and I don't remember the journey. Well, we live our whole life like that. And that's where I guess the the whole value of the walks are to, you know, you spend a couple of weeks on the trail, just you, you pack and stopping at night, you stay in whatever hotel or place you stay at, you meet other people, you have a beer, and that to me <laughs> is the joy of a beer. You, you've walked all day <laughs> and you That's sit true. and you go, oh, man, that's a good beer. Instead of, you know, we get home at the end of a work day and go, oh, and we've had a beer. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no joy in the beer. We're just hoping to get some you know, relief from the alcohol and the, sed- the sedative feeling. But you're yeah. enjoying a beer for the... Like, you know, it's taken on the whole joy of, like, everything else. You, you're present. Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. No, the um, <laughs> no, it's funny about the beer because, yes, having a beer at the end, you know, with, um, you know, in the bar, yeah. <laughs> you know, after you walk 36K, I think I did one day and there were some people meeting me, waiting for me in a small village. I think you probably read that bit yeah. where I think I'd walked – longer than I'd planned and I was my everything ate and I was coming down the hill into this tiny little um, Spanish village yeah and there was a few few pilgrims that I'd connected with and that I was trying to meet up with and they were all sitting in this in this bar and on the on the table was a beer you know like a huge you know pipe yeah. <laughs> and I could see it as I was walking in and I think when I picked that beer up and, and drank it it was probably the beer that tasted the best that I've ever had, I think, you know, because yeah. uh, because of where it was and what it meant, and and the they fact were waiting that I there it. for you, people that you don't really know or anything, but they they were your welcoming committee. Hey, you've done yeah. a day. Yeah, I know. And the guy I think came out from the bar as well, and there were people clapping, you know, and I didn't even know these people, you know, and I yeah. thought this is amazing. I've come out of this 
middle of nowhere place and there's a beer waiting for me in a local bar and I've got people cheering as I'm walking into the place. You know? No, <laughs> it I get much really better that. than that. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a real moment. It really was. So yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's, but you you know you get those kind of moments when you take this time out to do this stuff really and yeah, um, yeah. and I think <laughs> it it was um, the walk that you did on uh, Camino de San Salvador is that how you say it? That's um, it. Yeah. In the pandemic, and you said when you think you can't, you probably can. I really love that as an opening line uh, because it says, uh, I think, what did you say after that? It was how important it is to make the most of your fitness and your health whilst, whilst you have it and don't wait to do things uh, until, you, you know, till you can do them. You do them now. And you, you took a window of opportunity in the pandemic where you were allowed to travel before another <laughs> lockdown in the UK. And you went off and did a, it was only a week wasn't it? it was yeah, yeah, it was a week. An yeah. intense walk, wasn't it? You did. Yeah, it was. On your own. Yeah, there wasn't anyone else to meet there because no one else had the courage to go to it at that time. But. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was wonderful. It was um yeah, it was literally I literally got back just as the gates closed almost on um you know chum, chum, you chum, had chum, to, chum. yeah it was just literally <laughs> I literally managed to get out there and get the flight and go and do it within a, a very short time before we, you know, we will stop traveling again, you know? So yeah. um, it was a, that was a special one because obviously I wasn't going to be in danger really. I hardly saw anybody apart from in the evenings and things, yeah. but um, it was, yeah, it was good. It was almost that um, determination I have to always do a Camino each year, whatever's, whatever's happening, yeah. I'm going to be walking a Camino every year. So, and <laughs> You know what I what I did like about, you know, you said how important it is to make the most of your fitness and health whilst you have it. Don't wait to do things. Just go and do them. Because the whole point of dietless living is, you know, forget about dieting and focus on the living. Because we, I personally, this is where the whole philosophy came from. I spent 25 years worried about losing weight and I didn't do one scrap of living in that whole time because I was always waiting until I've lost the weight. You know, when I've lost the weight, then I can go on a holiday and, you know, because I'll be more confident or whatever other rubbish I was telling myself. And the whole thing is that we we sit around in the waiting room of life and life like we just talked about is speeding past us and really the purpose is to just get out there and actually start living you know I mean I realized for myself I, I wasn't really unhappy because I was overweight I was overweight because I was so damn unhappy and you've just yeah. got to get out and do stuff and I really love that in that moment of the pandemic that was it. You went bang. I'm off. No, <laughs> that's it. That is, and I think the that your point about just live, you know, live fully, and the weight, the weight will come away bit by bit. You know, it's uh, there's a phrase, you know, find the way by walking the way. You know, yep. so you you find your way by just keeping moving along. You know, so just um, and especially like going out walking and doing exercise, and it doesn't matter if it's even just a tiny bit. If you just you know, just get started. You know, I think that's start from wherever you are. I think that's a good way of looking at it. Um, yeah, and, and just go yeah. and do the things that you want to do. Don't wait until. And I think that's the biggest lesson takeaway. We'll call it a takeaway from the pandemic. Is nothing is guaranteed to be there forever, because no. you know, in those moments, so many things disappeared for us and we really do need to take the opportunities when they come a small window in a lockdown I'm off to Spain she says <laughs> yeah well no I mean you don't know what's around the corner no one knows what's around the corner and no, I think don't. that the experience of the pandemic was was massively shocking to to everybody I mean even now when I think back on it I think how did that happen you know like that was that was almost unreal however yeah. there were still things about it that were quite insightful like the fact that you couldn't be as busy you know because you couldn't go anywhere you couldn't spend yeah. money on certain things you were grounded a bit so many people started walking more in their local environments you know so yeah. there's always um, good with the bad exactly so there was a lot of um, pain around that time but there was also 
the potential for some lessons, some important lessons, I think. It's the story of life, Jackie. It is the story of life, yeah. When is your next walk, Jackie? <laughs> well, actually, I'm, I'm considering at the moment, I'm just maybe going to, to start some Caminos in different countries. So um, and I've done quite a lot in Spain. So I'm looking at doing some in different places. So at the moment, I'm exploring doing one in Sicily. I've just heard mm -hmm. from a, a colleague, and it's uh, about ten, nine, eight, nine days um, mm -hmm. coast to coast in Sicily. Um, and then there's also one in uh, Japan, which I'm thinking about oh, doing nice. next year. And then I've heard about some, there's actually some being uncovered in the UK um, recently. I've just um, been investigating. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking of doing another set of these walks and also writing about them in a similar way, but then having, you know, a, a different Camino in a different country, you know, yeah. in the book or something like that. You know, so it's a sort of a series of Caminos and, Caminos um, across the world. Oh, uh, Caminos across the world. That's it. Yeah. So, um, so Beautiful. something like that. Because I think the the thing I've got in my head is I always want that reminder every year of the of the lessons learned. Um, yeah. Whatever happens, there's such powerful, strong messages to bring into normal life. And yeah. um, in, yes, it takes a bit more effort to live them day to day because you're not you're pulled in lots of different directions. But I think some of the essential core messages from that book are very, very powerful to, yeah, to live and life they're, time, they're timeless, right? Yeah, they're timeless, absolutely. Yeah. So where can people find you if they want to know more about walking or your experiences? Um, well, I have a, a website um, which is um, uh, walkingbusinesscoach.com. Uh, so could contact me there or find me on LinkedIn, Jackie Jarvis, um, or on uh, Facebook. You know, I, I call myself the walking business coach because I work with um, business owners, coaches, consultants and professionals, you know, helping them to uh, find their way forward in their businesses. Yeah. So I can be found there. But if anyone's got any questions about the Camino or want to read the book, the book can be found on Amazon or also through the Endless Bookcase, uh, which was the publishing company that uh, kindly published the book for me. Yeah. So um, that's where you can find the book. Awesome. Thank you so much again for coming on the show today, Jackie. It has been an absolute pleasure talking to you and reading your book. And thank you to everyone who's watching or listening today. If you want more help with anything that we've talked about today, overcoming weight loss obstacles, just book in for a private session and let's just get it done this week because life is for living and an ounce of adjustment is always easier to implement than a pound of change. It's time to enjoy the life you've been looking for.